service. It's absolutely wonderful to see so many of you at Easter time and a special welcome to everybody who's joining us online for this service of worship today. I was out uh, walking the dog this morning and our neighbour has two young kids and as we came back at about 10 to 7, it was early doors, I could hear the kids were already in the garden saying, I found one, I found one. No prizes for getting they were looking for Easter eggs, of course. So if you've managed to hold off having your Easter eggs, well done, you're very con uh, controlled and restrained. Uh, but we are going to help you with that temptation this morning because we might have an Easter egg for young and old if you make it to the end of the service, of course. But for now, we're going to pause for a moment to gather ourselves I'll pray, and then we begin with the very special Easter greeting. So let's pause and pray. And on Easter morning, we are coming as the Lord's family into the presence of Almighty God. The risen King, our Saviour and our hope. So loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for Easter Day, this very special, this very joyous morning morning we, we remember you raising from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we come before you as brothers and sisters, as your church community, we come to worship you and accept our praise this morning as we honour you. Amen. Amen. Please stand everybody for the Easter greeting. <coughs> Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! We're going to do that again so we can be even louder. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! And that's about as far as we can go with masks on. Just a little reminder, please don't sing during the service. I think there's almost a, a, a sense of lament that we can't sing on Easter Day, but please do listen to the lovely music uh, and enjoy our service of worship. Hopefully it won't be too much longer before we can sing again. I'm going to hand over to Sarah to lead us in the next bit of the service. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. We're, we start by sitting and listening, as Andrew has said, to our first Easter hymn, the wonderful Jesus Christ is Risen Today. It's sung by the choir of St Martin's in the Field, and I have to say, it's a hard temptation, but we must not sing. <laughs>
week and to ask for God's forgiveness for the things we regret having said or done. The mistakes we've made, the hurts we may have caused, the moments when our discipleship might not have been as it should have been. And we say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And now may Almighty God, who forgives all and truly repents, have mercy upon you, pardon you, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all his goodness, keeping each of you in his life eternal. Amen. Amen. And now we are going to say the Gloria, and if you would like and are able, let's stand to do it. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Oh my God, and Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. The Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, you see our prayer. For you alone are the only one, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we sit again. The Collect for Easter Day. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son, overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. And now William is going to read our Gospel. The reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 20, beginning at the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. 
Then the disciple went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, If you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended for the part to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, William. We're now going to sit and listen to our next hymn, which reflects the words of this gospel, and is also personally one of my most favourite hymns, and it is played and sung for us by the music group. See what a morning.
Uh, and this year, this year's uh, Easter joke is a little bit more cerebral uh, than last year's. You know this when I tell you it's supplied by my wife. <laughs> anyway, a rabbit, an imam, and of course, a good old Church of England vicar walk in to the blood donation centre. And the nurse says to, the, says to them, do you know what blood type you are? And the rabbit says, I must, I must be a typo. Do you get it? I told you it was cerebral. Have a little moment to think. Rabbit, typo, rabbi. Hopefully, if, if you still don't get it, come and see me afterwards and I'll, I'll give you the full exegesis of that, that joke. Rabbit is obviously meant to be rabbi, and it's uh, obviously a, a, a mistake. But I wonder if, when you think about Easter, a good man, Jesus, being killed, I wonder if we also think that might be a mistake. Did a good man just get killed even though he'd done nothing wrong? But maybe you're also wondering, if this is the quality of humour they used to at St. James, maybe it was a mistake to come today. In fact, you might want to come next week where we have someone else with us through. But sometimes being a minister in the Church of England is a bit like being on the set of a vicar of Dibley. I hope you've uh, seen that one, or some of it anyway. Some years ago, I uh, lived and worked in Bristol, and I used to park every day at St. Philip and St. Jacob's Church car park, which is in the centre of town, if you don't know it, in Bristol. Every day I unlocked the church gates and drove my little car in. One morning I was unlocking the gates and noticed a car was already inside the church grounds. And this is kind of unusual really because I got there usually before 7am. As soon as I took the padlock off, the car engine started. And as I swung open the gates, the car accelerated towards the exit. The only problem was I was still in the way. And as she got closer, I could see the lady driving, and she had a very determined look on her face, which worried me a little bit. She continued to drive straight at me, and I kind of had to jump out of the way as she sped past. I thought I might have glimpsed those sort of World War I blue max stickers down the side of the car, showing the number of, um, number of enemy planes defeated. And I know what you're probably thinking, you get double points for a vicar. <laughs> Perhaps that was also a mistake, and there wasn't even a word of apology. Thinking about it now, I did wonder whether she'd actually parked there all night, got locked in, didn't have a key, and took her first chance to escape. <laughs> but there wasn't one word of apology as I had to dive out of the way. But apologies and saying sorry is not something we're good at we're honest. Either we're saying sorry for every little thing, like sorry for nudging someone in the queue, or sorry for forgetting my mask, or we're not saying sorry for the things we really ought to. Often it's only afterwards we reflect and think, okay, perhaps I really ought to say sorry to that person for that. But time passes and we miss the opportunity. But what I've also noticed is that sometimes people do say sorry, just in their own way. What they might not be able to voice in words, they express instead as actions. And the point, I think, is this. A physical act can express what's really in someone's heart when words can't be found, or words are simply insufficient. Some years ago, I was listening to a BBC Radio 4 programme and they were interviewing a, a British Army bomb disposal expert in Afghanistan. And the interviewer asked why, why he did it, why he took such a risk every day. And he said something that fascinated me. He said, I think everyone feels at some point they need to atone for something. I think everyone feels at some point they need to atone for something. What that army officer reflected was that deep down, we know there are times where we've all fallen short. 
and we're out of sorts with the world. If we don't deal with that guilt, it can become a heavy burden, weighing us down like the anchor on a ship. Outside, we might not be speaking the words, but inside, inside, we're just dying to make things right. I want to suggest to you this morning, Easter morning, Good Friday is God dying to make things right. It's a physical act that expresses what was in God's heart when words were insufficient. It's about Jesus doing for us what we could never do for ourselves. I want to suggest to you that Good Friday and Easter Sunday are not mistakes, but instead things of wonder and things of tremendous, overwhelming, overflowing joy. What if instead of Good Friday being the mistaken end of just a good man, in the wonder of God's plan to renew all things, it was actually a world-changing act of restoration and forgiveness. The possibility of a new start for all people, everywhere, no matter how much they might have felt they'd fallen short of God's unconditional love. Perhaps they failed to love their families. Perhaps they'd taken advantage or hurt those who were around them or even just struggled deep down to love themselves. What if Easter was the physical act of God showing us through Jesus Christ that he could say, I forgive you? Because only God in Jesus Christ can say to us, I know what it's like to be human, and here is forgiveness for those wrongs, those times when we fall in short offences against humanity and also by extension against humanity's maker and father. Only someone who could represent both parties could bridge the gap, humanity and God. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a German Christian pastor and he was murdered by the Nazis in World War II. But he said this. If Jesus wasn't human, how could he help us? If Jesus wasn't God, how could he help us? So Good Friday is an act of wonder because Almighty God is able to take a physical act that was intended for darkness and pain and bring light hope out of it. Only God can bring light out of darkness. There is tremendous hope in it, in Good Friday and Easter Sunday for each of us. Because if God can do that for Jesus, what can he do for each of us? Maybe we feel like we've gone through the bleakest of times. We're having our own Good Friday. I want to say to you, you can have your Easter Sunday this morning. All we have to do is pray a simple prayer, something like, Father, forgive me and help me. Give me a new beginning. Think back to that army officer, atoning for what he felt he'd done wrong, and perhaps even feeling he could never do enough. God in Jesus Christ was atoning for us making amends for our wrongs and offering each of us a fresh start with new hope and a plan, a purpose for the future. In the wonder of God's plan, even death couldn't keep hold of the man, Jesus, who did this for us. Good Friday and Easter Sunday, just overwhelmingly fantastic, overwhelmingly hope-giving, life-giving, joy-supplying Easter Sunday. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Amen. Let me invite you to stand if you're able and return to our service books once again. 
and this is the moment where we declare our faith in God. So please join me by saying together, Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness, he humbled himself, and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God raised him on high, and gives him in the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be seated as we turn to prayer. And I'm going to invite Paul Matthews to come and lead us from the front in a time of prayer. Thank you, Paul. Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather in our churches, in our homes, and across the world, on this Easter day. May we share the joy and hope of the risen Lord Jesus. Grant us grace to enter into his triumph, that we may share his risen life with our friends and our neighbours. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for this broken world of ours. You alone know the suffering and the grief and selfish of people. It calls the poorest and the most vulnerable. Help us to share the good things you have given us by what we are, by what we say, and by what we do for others. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we have been unable to meet and hug our friends and families during this pandemic. We pray that soon we will be able to share love with one another. We remember those who grow up not knowing love, the abused, the lonely, the homeless, those out of work, and those in financial difficulty. Give them hope, and that they may know the joy of our risen Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for the sick and in those in need of your help. In silence, we remember those known to us. Grant healing to the sick, comfort to the sorry and anxious. May your peace be with them all this Easter day and every day for Jesus Christ's sake. Lord, in your mercy. Dearest Lord Jesus, you wept for Lazarus, your friend, and your heart was filled with sympathy for the widow near. Hold in your loving arms those who now mourn, and surround them with your quiet comfort. Let your love, which conquered death, flow into their hearts and give them peace. 
we remember those who we have loved, the sea no longer. Merciful Father, thank you, Paul, for those intercessions. Once again, if you're able, please stand. shake each other's hands or hug each other as we would like, but we can offer each other, literally, a sign of the peace. And if you were here last week, you remember we did that through British Sign Language, and we're going to try that again today. So I'm going to wish you the peace of the Lord be with you. If you do that back to me, and then do that to each other. Here we go. So, in sign language, may the peace of the Lord be with you. Let's do that again. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Fantastic. Do share that with each other in a contactless way. Please be seated once again. And now we have some music for reflection as I prepare the holy tape.
turn to our service books to begin the liturgy of the sacrament. The Lord is here. Is here. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love, you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and from death. Your word goes out to call each of us home, to the city where angels sing your praise. Today we join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and with words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, and yet at the end they turned on him. And on the night he was betrayed, he came to the table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to stand again now for the prayer of consecration and remain standing until we come to the Lord's Prayer. It's lovely to see some members of our 8 o'clock Book of Common Prayer communion and they'll be familiar too with standing for the prayer of consecration. We continue. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He broke bread and said, this is my body, which is given for you all. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood, shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. So do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. And therefore, Father, with this bread and with this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for each of us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. So, Lord, send your Spirit upon us at this moment. By these gifts we may feed with open eyes and with hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed into your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour, glory and power be yours forever and ever. Turn to our seats as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. For though we are many, we are one body, because we all share. Near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and the blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, 
and remember him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. And just a little reminder about uh, the form for communion. Uh, we're going to celebrate in one kind today, which means the host only, the bread only. That's what uh, we'll be giving out. But I will celebrate on your behalf with the wine. Obviously, we're not able to share the common cup at the moment with coronavirus restrictions. Now, you'll be directed to come to the front. Please come to the front just before the bottom of the dais. That's the raised bit on the stage. You'll see the yellow and black line there. Uh, and as you come forward to receive the host, I'll place that into your hand. If you want to receive today, put your hands open and flat like that so I know that you want to receive communion. If you want to receive a blessing, please do come forward. It would be my joy and privilege to pray God's blessing. Either have your service book, keep that in your hands, or keep your hands down, and I'll know to pray God's blessing, God's blessing on you. Um, younger ones, please come to as well. Uh, I think the other thing just to mention is that when you do come forward, obviously you'll be coming forward with your mask on. You will need to take it off to receive communion, so come forward, take the mask off, hands out, receive and partake, and then move away with the mask back on. All right. We'll guide you all through it. Don't worry, folks. It's uh, a bit like being on an aeroplane with uh, a cabin crew who are very well trained and equipped. <laughs> And the blood of Christ keep us in eternal life. So this continues on page 7 of your service books. We say together the prayer after communion. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit likes give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's lovely to see you all today, and it's lovely to see you coming out for communion. I was actually smiling at all of you. It may not have looked like that with all the masks on, the PPE, but it's a blessing to me to be able to serve you today. Our final hymn is that great Easter anthem, Thine be the glory. Please do your best to resist singing along. Sing along in your hearts, or sing along later on as you leave after the blessing. Thine be the glory.
God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. God the Son, who bursting forth from the grave, has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share this Easter faith. And God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you, fulfill you, and sustain you with Christ's peace and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you all those this day God calls you to love and care for. Amen. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. But do have an Easter egg first. God bless you. Amen.